welcome to our project toward competency-based best practices for global health and dental education, a Global Health Starter Kit. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the intended use of the starter kit. It is free and available for anyone to use for educational purposes. You may use, adapt, and modify the starter kit materials to suit the needs of you and your students to create an individualized teaching and learning experience. We just ask that you give proper credit to the project under the terms of our Creative Commons license. The starter kit we've made available in two formats. The first format is um, intended to be instructor-led, so by you. It includes teaching notes, assessments, and in-class activities. The second format to provide a little more flexibility is available for those who want to engage in self-guided learning with included readings where um, each presentation can be taught in video format and then um, available for self-viewing. Module one is titled Global Trends, and it was co-authored with Christy Colburn. You can see that it is related to these selected competencies from the Global Oral Health Competency Matrix, and it covers topics like the global burden of disease, the demographic and epidemiologic trends and transitions, and how those impact oral health. Module two is titled Global Goals and was co-authored by Dr. John Dono. It's related to the competencies that you see here and it covers topics like an introduction to health systems and policy. And we also introduce global health institutions and the millennium and sustainable development goals. Module three is titled Back to Basics, Primary Care and is co-authored with Drs. Lisa Simon, Carlos Ferron and Hugh Silk. It's related to the competencies you see and we talk about the relationship be between oral health and general health, we revisit the alma ata, we talk about the role of primary care in today's globalizing world, and we even introduce um, concepts of universal health coverage. Module four is entitled Social Determinants and Risks and was co-authored with Drs. Jennifer Casper and Karen Sokol Gutierrez. It's related to the competencies you see here. We talk about the social determinants for health and disease worldwide. We also cover concepts like vulnerable populations, the concept of the bottom billion, and sociocultural and biomedical models of health and disease. And the final module of the series is Module 5 with a focus on ethics and sustainability. It was co-authored with Drs. Judith Lasker, Jessica Evert, Irene Adiatmica, Gustavo Bermudez Mora, and Carl Woodmanzi. And this has a strong focus on um, making sure that any efforts that we undertake to address the challenges that we discuss in the modules 1 through 4 have an ethical component and consider sustainability of those programs. I want to just take a minute and note that, of course, no single module can actually teach all of the competencies, but that each of these modules is part of our effort to work towards best practices for competency-based global health teaching and learning. Good day, and thank you for joining us for Harvard Worldwide Week 2020. My name is Christina Cassano, and I am the program coordinator for the Office of Global and Community Health at the Harvard School of Dental Medicine, also known as HSDM. Now that you've heard from Dr. Brittany Seymour describing our Global Health Starter Kit, I would like to share other events and initiatives that the Office of Global and Community Health have implemented since our inception in 2010. A distinguishing feature of our programming at HSDM is the Global and Community Health Track. The track provides students with the opportunity for curricular and extracurricular activities in global and community health. This is throughout their four-year DMD program. The goal of this track is to provide DMD students with the tools necessary to become leaders in global and community health. It requires that students complete coursework, develop a scholarly project on a subject related to a core issue of global and community health under the supervision of a faculty sponsor, and write an original thesis on the scholarly project that makes a unique contribution to the global and community health field. They are eligible for honors in a special field as well. Participants in the track are designated as global and community health fellows. They assist faculty with research, serve on relevant university committees, and help raise awareness around HSDM and the entire university on global and community health oral health issues. They also plan the global and community health seminar series, which I'll speak a little bit more about now. 
The Office of Global and Community Health started a monthly oral health seminar series in 2013 to bring engaging speakers to HSDM to speak about a wide variety of issues dealing with global and community health. Held throughout the entire year, the seminar series features faculty, fellows, visiting scholars, politicians, and so forth from around the U.S. and the world to visit with the Harvard community over lunch and discuss their experiences. The series has welcomed fascinating discussions ranging from former health minister Dr. Patricia Garcia discussing healthcare challenges in Peru, researcher and professor Dr. Stefan Listel of the Netherlands describing the economic and social impacts of dental diseases, and HSDM pre-doctoral students speaking about their experiences treating patients with intellectual disabilities at the 2019 Special Olympics held in Abu Dhabi. This is just to name a few. The seminar series is a wonderful way to connect our students and faculty to experts on a more casual yet informative basis. You will now hear about a wonderful curriculum experience for HSDM students that takes place in Costa Rica. an exciting program for us. It's a combination of students from Harvard Dental and from the University of Costa Rica from the School of Dentistry. The potential yeah. takeaways from this week for our students um, at HSDM I think are numerous. It depends I think where they are in their thinking around their role as a dentist in today's world but um, my hope is that they, they really think about how to optimize the skills and knowledge they're gaining at HSDM in ways they maybe haven't even considered. Or if they have considered, that that's really begun to clarify you know, the direction they may want to go with their careers in the short term, in the long term, so that uh, they can really feel like they're contributing and meeting their full potential as dentists. I didn't realize how immersive the experience would be between living in this jungle environment for a week to entering indigenous communities and interacting with the community leaders and going into someone's home and seeing what their life was like to visiting an African palm oil plantation to talking with somebody in the Ministry of Health. There were just so many factors that I didn't realize would enrich the experience that I'm just incredibly appreciative of this experience. Uh, it's definitely far exceeded my expectations. I've learned so much, I've made so many awesome connections with people. Hello, my name is Hisham Al-Hazmi. I'm a pediatric dentist and I'm currently a doctoral candidate in the oral health policy and epidemiology department at Harvard School of Dental Medicine. I'm Fad Hijazi, and I as well am a pediatric dentist, as well as a doctoral candidate in the Harvard School of Dental Medicine. Hisham and I have been working with the global health team in the Harvard School of Dental Medicine and the Health Advancement Initiative in Vietnam since 2018 in order to help transition the curriculum in the University of Medicine and Pharmacy in Ho Chi Minh City from a credit-based curriculum to a competency-based curriculum. Over the last two years, we conducted multiple workshops in competency-based education, either by traveling to Vietnam or through virtual workshops. The project with HiVN is a project that involves a change of both the medical and dental curriculum working in sync with each other. Just as the current curriculum in HSDM, UMP Dental School integrated teaching of their first year dental students with the UMP Medical School. The goal of this project was to standardize education among all eight dental schools in Vietnam. This curriculum will thus be able to be disseminated to the other dental schools in Vietnam. With standardizing care throughout all the dental schools, Vietnam will be able to create a national standardized exam in similar fashion to the REB and NERB exams in the US. We believe this project will improve the quality of teaching and learning, starting with UMP and then moving to the rest of the country. This would lead to a better quality of graduating dentists, which would lead to better care of their population. It is very important for any project to get approval of all stakeholders. In this project, it was important to us to get approval from the faculty of UMP, as they're an integral part of the success of this curriculum reform. We were happy to find a group of passionate and hardworking educators. 
This curriculum reform would not have been possible without the hard work of these group of educators. Over the last two or more years, we are happy to have created a bond between us that goes beyond a professional relationship, but also that friendships were created that we hope will last a lifetime. Hi, my name is Dr. Riddhi Dadamia. I am a resident at Harvard School of Dental Medicine. Today, I'm going to talk about India Oral Cancer Project launched by Harvard University. India is a very young country and very diverse with an overall population of about 1.7 billion people. More than 65% of these people are below the age of 35. And cancer is generally perceived as a disease of old age. However, there is an increasing evidence of studies showing young adults as well as teenagers developing oral malignancies in South Asia. And India being the biggest country in South Asia facing peculiar challenges. Oral cancer is so pervasive in India that every year it kills 1 million people. That is every day about five people are dying due to oral cancer over there. Smokeless tobacco kills additional 200,000 people. These numbers are astronomically high and alarming. Genetic burden is also a problem for India. So people are facing challenges like strong influence to consume tobacco products from media and film industry, social norms and conducts on consuming nicotine products, lack of awareness towards getting regular dental checkups. As a result, there is a profound need for evidence-based interventions that promote all cancer screening programs on a large scale. On the brighter side, there are many silver linings of hope, and one of which is India Oral Cancer Project launched by Harvard University. The mission of Harvard School of Dental Medicine is to develop and foster a community of global leaders dedicated to improving health by integrating medicine and dentistry at the forefront of education, research, and patient care. HSDM has launched this project in Gujarat, located in the west coast of India, and oral medicine specialists as well as dental interns are trained and calibrated for cancer screening. The goal of this project is to study the prevalence of oral pre-malignant and malignant conditions and to explore the variety of factors associated with it to design a sustainable screening and awareness project that can serve for a longer run in India. This study is designed with a primary focus on the culture and social determinants of health and future steps for these studies would be designing and launching robust screening programs, engaging educational initiatives for young adults and teenagers, and developing early detection guides and resources, as well as oncology training for dental interns, specialists, and public health dentists. Our institute has taken dentistry to the grassroots level in the middle and lower income countries, where there is an immense need. With world-class clinicians and researchers, Harvard School of Dental Medicine is serving on a remarkable capacity to global health by establishing sustainable oral health programs and exploring unique ways of spreading smile and health all around the world. Thank you. Hi. I'm Donna Hackley, an instructor in the Office of Global and Community Health at Harvard School of Dental Medicine. And I've spent the past seven years working with colleagues in Rwanda to open the first dental school in the country. For more than a decade, tooth and gum diseases have been the number one reason that people seek professional care in the district hospitals of Rwanda. With a population of more than 12 million people and fewer than 40 dentists, there was an urgent need to build health professions training capacity. Since 2011, HSDM has been a leading partner with Rwanda's Ministry of Health, the University of Rwanda, and the University of Maryland in an effort to launch the new dental school and the new Bachelor of Dental Surgery degree program at the University of Rwanda. This effort was part of a national initiative that began years earlier, led by Partners in Health and the Clinton Health Access Initiative and the Rwandan Ministries of Health and Education. Together, 
these entities launched the Rwanda Human Resources for Health Program, HRH, to advance medical education and to improve healthcare delivery systems. Given the connection of oral health to overall health, the rise of non-communicable diseases, and the potential for preventive care to mitigate disease, it was critical that dentistry be included in plans for the HRH program. Dean Jane Barrow was instrumental in urging representatives <clears throat> from HRH to include oral health and a new dental program in their plans for a world-class education system for health professionals in Rwanda. Brittany Seymour, assistant professor at HSDM, helped Dean Barrow to make the case for dental surgery programs to be included in the HRH initiative. In the fall of 2013, the new school welcomed its inaugural class to the five-year dental surgery program. They were steadfast in their desire to learn. The inaugural class adopted the nickname of the Pioneers with a Z at the end and became close friends. Some of the students had never experienced a dental visit and did not know any dentists. So this was not only a new school and a new program, but totally new territory for them. They are truly pioneers. They were faithful and resilient throughout the program. Every year, we at HSDM send a team of faculty and alumni to serve on site in Rwanda as faculty mentors and teachers, working with local colleagues to build the educational infrastructure from the ground up. In November 2018, the first ever cohort of Rwandan dentists graduated from the University of Rwanda School of Dentistry. It was an incredible blessing to be part of this historic moment in Rwanda. This is some of the most challenging, enjoyable, and rewarding work I have ever done. We also completed important work outside the classroom to better understand Rwanda's oral health needs. In 2016, I worked with colleagues in Rwanda and at the Tufts University School of Dental Medicine to plan and conduct Rwanda's first national oral health survey. We found heavy burden of disease and oral conditions, which really underscored the need for greater access to dental care and the need for dental training programs. We expect that the HRH program will continue through an extension for the next six years, and we will continue to help with curriculum delivery and to provide technical and strategic support. The pioneers fulfilled their own dreams of becoming the first homegrown dentists in Rwanda, and they've pledged to do their best to achieve more for their country. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm Dr. Ellie Joseph. I'm a dentist from Haiti. And I'm also an expert in uh, public health and community leadership. It is a pleasure to have this conversation with Dr. Brian Swan from the Harvard School of Dental Medicine. And we are going to talk about um, how we met um, during our experiences during my experiences as a community solutions program fellow. I met Ellie at a lecture that was uh, set up through Dr. Prophet to uh, lecture to dental students currently enrolled at the University of Port-au-Prince School of Dentistry. The lecture was about building capacity. It was about building capacity through the oral physician model, which is saying that dentists can do more in terms of primary care. All over the world, there's a shortage of primary care healthcare providers. And we believe that next best trains to medical doctors are dentists. And why aren't we doing more in our offices to work at the front line towards prevention and early detection? Many people see the dentist over long periods of time for their treatment. And many people see the dentist and don't necessarily have a primary care physician. So we're talking exclusively about this from a global perspective and specifically about Haiti, how Haiti would benefit by expanding capacity 
a country with 10 million people and approximately 300 dentists, how can we build capacity? How can we help areas of primary well, care? First of all, I was inspired uh, by doing all of this program to know that um, we cannot only do uh, direct patient care. There is an opportunity that we can go to a community and what we do would be disseminating all health information. It would be, you know, to educate the people. Because before the fellowship, I was thinking that, you know, when we have to go to the community, we have to organize a, a mobile clinic and we have to provide uh, dent dental patient care to feel that we have done something for the community. But then after the fellowship, I realized that, you know, we can do, we, if we go to a community and we share health, oral health information to them, this is also an important step because it will help them to change their, their attitude, their behaviors, and their practice towards oral care. And this is how also I partnered with uh, different groups in Haiti. Uh, some of them were doing back to school program and I told them, hey, uh, there is something I can offer. You know, uh, by doing this, those back to school programs, I joined them and I provide all hygiene education to the school children. And after that, we distributed uh, toothbrushes to the children. So this is one of the ways that I incorporated what I've learned during the fellowship. And now, Hi, my name is Stephanie Chamut. I am an instructor in oral health policy and epidemiology and dental public health at Harvard School of Dental Medicine. Also, I am a curriculum evaluator lead at the HRSA funded National Center for Equitable Care for Elders, where we provide national training and technical assistance activities aimed to improve the care for older adults. Within my role at the Office of Global and Community Health at HSDM, I am part of the Human Resources for Health faculty at the University of Rwanda School of Dentistry. And also, I have been very tightly involved in different initiatives that promote healthy aging in Mexico. Access to oral care is very limited, especially in developing countries. And oral diseases affect nearly 4 million people worldwide, and almost half of the world's population suffers from untreated tooth decay. The power and influence of sugar is alarming due to the direct uh, connection with tooth decay, diabetes, and obesity. The daily consumption of sugar is rising around the world, and there has been a challenge for patients and healthcare providers. But for patients, lifestyle and behavior, such diet, nutrition, regular oral hygiene, and physical activities are key factors that help in reducing the risk for developing non-communicable diseases. The concept of health can be subjective, and building health not only implies avoiding disease, but also promoting the physical, mental, and social capacity through life. Chronic diseases are oral diseases that uh, produce deterioration in the human body. And Mexico has officially declared epidemiological emergencies for obesity and type 2 diabetes. More sugary beverages are consumed per capita in Mexico than in any other country in the world. By age three, one third of the children are overweight or obese. And it is estimated that 50% of Mexican children born in 2010 will develop diabetes in their lifetime. As a result, Mexico is spreading innovative public health initiatives, school-based and national tax programs, and public media campaigns to combat the high rates of non-communicable diseases. Through the David Rockefeller Institute of Latin American Studies and the collective efforts with members from El Poder del Consumidor and the Mexican Dental Association Foundation, HSDM was able to engage in the project of strengthening public health nutrition and oral health communication strategies related to sugar and health risks in Mexico. These efforts aim to develop effective innovative, innovative 
integrative uh, messages for parents, caregivers, service providers, and relevant stakeholders to strengthen their understanding and diverse health risks, including oral health, sugar consumption, and nutrition, which leads to tooth decay, obesity, and diabetes concern. The high rates of obesity, diabetes, and hypertension at the high consumption of sugar beverages in Mexico increase the Mexicans' vulnerability not only to face compromised quality of life, but also to become more susceptible to COVID-19 and its devastating effects. Our team at ASDM is dedicated to developing, promoting, and sustaining initiatives in oral public health domestically and around the world. Hi, I'm Jane Barrow, Associate Dean for Global and Community Health at HSGM. Thanks so much for joining us for a snapshot of our many global activities. As you can see, Oral disease is a heavy burden around the world, and yet it's preventable. That's why we at HSDM are working so hard with our collaborators and partners all around the globe to rethink health systems, education systems, care delivery systems, health benefit systems, to ensure that all health professionals, from the community health worker on up to the most specialized provider, understand at least foundational core concepts of oral health, that oral health is integrated into all primary and preventive care systems and is included in chronic disease management protocols, and is certainly included in all universal health benefits packages. We are working hard, as are our collaborators, because as I said, this disease is preventable and disproportionately affects our most vulnerable. In order to meet our Millennium Development Goals, we want to ensure that everyone has access to good oral health so that in turn, they may have good overall health, wellness, and a happy life. Thank you so much. Goodbye.